I love to code. I began coding when I was six years old when my dad introduced me to a programming tool called Scratch, where you can drag and drop different blocks of code to make a program. I was amazed at the extraordinary range of things you could create with code. It didn't matter whether it was a game, a tool, or any other application, whether it was simple or complex, it was my own personal creation that was special and unique and that I could share with the rest of the world. This was what motivated me to progress through many different levels and kinds of programming, such as building mobile apps, websites, and more. In the summer of 2015, I participated in the Technovation Challenge, a technology entrepreneurship competition that encourages girls to pursue STEM. I developed an app called Concussion Checker, which lets coaches, athletes, and parents evaluate a head injury for a possible concussion. Developing this app and the accompanying business plan was my springboard into technology on a whole new level, using technology to help my community and solve real-world problems. I realized that even though I was 11 years old and a middle school student, I could create apps, products that can benefit people around the world and make an impact. We did get to the finals. We went to, we went to San Francisco and won second place globally. Even though winning the award... <laughs> Thank you. Even though winning the award was amazing, what I truly cherish is my discovery of a whole community of girls and women who had groundbreaking ideas that could change the world. It changed my entire perspective. Family is another significant part of my life. I come from a family with a very diverse background. My family's history is spread all across Asia, from Vietnam to Hong Kong to China to Indonesia. Part of our diverse culture is food. We love connecting with each other through sharing a meal together. Every summer or Christmas holidays, we would gather at my uncle's house. My uncle Sonny and Aunt Celeste would cook some of the most amazing meals, and we would talk and share some really good time together. This is our family. We value our relationship, our connection. I was born in Hong Kong. We lived with my grandmother after my grandpa passed away when I was two. My grandma would take care of me when my parents were at work. She would read to me and took me out to places. We spent a lot of time together. My mom always said I took so many things after my grandma. The way I talk, the way I carry myself. I am a little shadow of my grandma. When I was around seven or eight years old, my grandma was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. The disease affects everyone differently. For my grandma, the biggest impact on our family was how difficult it is for us to have a conversation. She's often asking us what day it is or what time it is. When we're on the phone, she's always asking us how we are and whether we've eaten yet over and over again. In our 10-minute conversation together, she would have only asked around three or four different questions. As a result of this, it's difficult to tell her about school and other things I want to tell her about that we used to be able to, and increasingly so as the disease progresses. Dinner around the table became difficult at times. The lost connection has the biggest impact on our relationship. Now I live in New York. My grandma still lives in Hong Kong, and it's difficult for us to connect with each other. The distance doesn't make it any easier for us to connect with each other. We call her often, but having a conversation is still difficult, especially now that we're not talking face to face. We've tried to cope by setting up visual aids around the house. She has a whiteboard that her caregiver updates regularly that has the date, her home address, appointments that are coming up, and my dad's phone number. She also has an iPad that she uses to look at photos of my parents and me regularly to help remind her of us. She uses these often but still gets confused and needs constant reminders. As a family member of an Alzheimer's patient, it's hard to feel in control of the situation. Coding is a place that I have complete control over what's going on. So I developed Timeless. Timeless is an app that empowers Alzheimer's patients and their loved ones to stay connected during the disease and to gain control over the illness. The app helps Alzheimer's patients connect with loved ones by facilitating photo sharing and organizing contacts and events in a simple way. It uses artificial intelligence-based facial recognition technology to help Alzheimer's patients recognize the people around them. The design and features of Timeless are inspired by my experiences with my grandmother. During the design process, I often asked myself, what would my grandmother do, and how would this help her? I want to be able to empathize with how patients like my grandmother feel, 
and understand how my app can help them live better daily lives. Timeless helps me help my grandmother live a better daily life, but I still wish things were different. I wish there was a way to turn back the clock and be that little child with my grandmother again. But ironically, isn't that what Alzheimer's disease is doing to my family and to my grandmother? To go to the memory lane and to erase them all as my grandmother's memory rolls back. There is no cure, but we can slow the progression and extend the connection and the memories we have with my grandmother. With Timeless, I believe there is a way to help her. Food is what connects us. Spending time and sharing a meal together is what harnesses our relationship and our bond with each other. Timeless will become a big part of our family's life. Not only will we gather around the dinner table, but we will also stay connected through Timeless. Illnesses like this often make us feel powerless, but it was seeing how powerless patients like my grandma are and how powerless we are when we could do nothing to help her get better that inspired me to create Timeless. My experience tells me that anyone at any age can make a difference when they are driven by purpose. You don't have to be a doctor or a politician to affect change in the world. Solve the problems you see around you. Solve the problems that matter to you. Participating in Technovation changed my perspective because it showed me that when you are driven to solve a problem for your community, your mission and your purpose drive groundbreaking ideas. So I ask of you, what will you change? Thank you.